Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and we're working on page two. Um, let's see. So on page two, we're going to use this eight by eight um, as the base, and then we're going to add this cut apart uh, on top, and it is going to be in a card style that's going to flip up like so. Okay, so I'm going to set aside my papers. That was all my planning. We're going to go ahead and add the base, which I need to trim, and then we'll add the top. The topper. Okay, and because I'm trimming this, I'll need to knock off that core white real quick with the ink. I have a fresh ink pad, so it goes really fast. When it's kind of dry, I have to go over it repeatedly. As a tip, when you're applying ink directly from the um, the ink pad itself, always start in the center and go out. Then you don't have to worry about those corners tearing up the foam of your ink pad. I try to remember to do that all the time. Occasionally I forget, and then you see these little divots. Okay, it's just verifying that it's right side up. Again, we're on page two. pretty but I wanted something simple because I'm using a cut apart as the, the design feature so this nice simple writing makes for great background and for a nice contrast okay there we go so this is going to go centered here and it's going to flip up so this is 11 and 3 quarters, 11 and 3 quarters, you're going to score at 5 and 7 eighths, score at 5 and 7 eighths. Okay, it's going to get applied just like that. But before I do that, I think I'm going to go ahead and add my topper. Yep. Okay, I'm going to use, whoops, magnets to keep it closed. So I'll go ahead and add those right now. One here and one here. Okay, I got my dog's hair in here, sorry about that. Okay, so that's gonna stay closed. We're just gonna adhere this directly on top and I am going to center it. And as usual, I'm gonna use my eyeballs to do that. Now if you want, if you only do three of the four sides, you could make the top a pocket or the side. I'm not going to do that, but it is, something you could do, kind of have something, a little tuck spot. We've been kind of waiting on the rain and I just heard it, so. There we go. Okay, now I chose this pattern and honestly, I'm not sure where it came from. I think it's from the A4 pack because I didn't see it in the 8x8. So actually, now that I said that out loud, I'm sure it's from the um, the A4 pack. I think it's really pretty. Um, I wish I had a larger sheet of it. Um, I'm going to apply this to the bottom and then we're going to use this wood here 
and here to separate the two pages. So um, I think I want to put my smaller pieces down, and I've mentioned this before many times, but if you're new, when you are color blocking, um, always lay down the smallest piece first, because if you need to trim it to fit, you want to um, trim the larger piece just because it's easier to manage uh, in the trimmer itself. Once you get inside the, you know, two inch, one inch range, it's really hard to get a straight cut um, without your paper want, wanting to torque one way or another. And that's true even if you're using an X-Acto knife. Once you get below an inch, trying to hold it in place with your ruler can get to be a challenge. Okay. So the this is one continuous piece, so I'm just going to check and see which way it goes together. This is the way it goes together. Okay, so that'll go up top. I said continuous piece, but I meant continuous pattern because clearly I cut it in two. <laughs> okay. Okay, and then here's our second piece and I do need to trim it quite a bit. You see if one is smaller than the other, just in case. It looks like they're about the same. So I'm going to mark it. When I'm color blocking, I like to, to mark the left and right, top and bottom, just so you have a line to follow in the trimmer. And that matters because sometimes this doesn't go in straight, which means you want a slightly angled cut. I need to take off a little more um, to make it appear straight, even though it's not. I think that's going to do it. We'll see very quickly. Yes, it does. I'm going to ink it. I'm going to put this down. I'm going to rearrange it so I'm not pushing my head into the frame and we'll do the same thing. We'll trim that larger piece to fit. Remember to turn it upside down because your whole page is upside down. Hey, beautiful, beautiful. Did I tell you, I told you how, how long it was this way, but I think I forgot to tell you how wide it was. And it will be in the banner. It is five and seven eighths, five and seven eighths. 
by 11 and 3 quarters, 5 and 7 eighths by 11 and 3 quarters, and that number comes from this cut apart. So I just sized um, this card to fit the cut apart. And I need to write that down so I don't forget. So it was 11 and 3 quarters, and that's by 5 and 4, 5, 5, and 7 eighths. 7 eighths, and then you're going to score. At five and seven eight. So what I do when it's not, it doesn't work out perfectly on. No, it will. Okay, there's an eighth inch mark on. If it was off, uh, like a sixteenth inch, what I usually do is put a tick mark, put it in my scoreboard, and line the tick mark up with any groove. But in this case, seven eighths is on the at least on the Martha Stewart scoreboard so that should be fine okay that's it for page two back soon with page three hey everyone stephanie and we're working on page three page three so this is what i've designed for page three we're getting ready to put it together i really like the way it came together this is a cut a, cut apart that um eek, that i just matted with some black cardstock and then i've got this piece which is going to be centered and it's got a drop down. So this is 11 by five. Five by 11, you're gonna score at six and five eighths. Score at six and five eighths. And it's gonna get installed this way. And I believe, no, I'm sure I'm going to leave this as a pocket. So when I glue it, I'm only gonna glue three sides. So this will be a little tuck spot. <clears throat> So let's start by going ahead and adding the base to this. And then we're gonna, the next thing we'll do is we'll figure out the magnet placement. Ah, I think. I believe this is from the 12 by 12. I'm looking at the scale, I think that's right. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking to myself. So we need a magnet to keep it closed. Now the challenge with a magnet here, no, nope, it's gonna be okay. Um, I was thinking about stuff being in the pocket, but it's gonna be behind this black piece. So that's gonna work out just fine. Okay, let's go ahead and add this. There is some small print on here, so take a close look. This is from the eight by eight. Um, and again, I'm using two packs of eight by eight, and that's why you've already seen this pattern once before. I like doing the two packs because then I can use the front and the back, uh, both prints, instead of having to choose. Plus, when you're doing an album, you need you need some paper. Okay, there we go. Okay, so let's go ahead and add our magnet here. I hope everybody's doing good. We're having a nice kind of rainy day, which makes it uh, super easy to stay inside and craft and not feel a bit guilty <laughs> about not getting out in the sunshine. When it's really nice outside, I feel like I'm kind of wasting my day if I don't get out. There we go. I'm sure lots of you feel that way. Okay, so that's going to hold everything closed. Okay, now we have to think about, I'm just lining it up with my grid here, about placement, because, I guess I didn't push my corners down, 
I thought about, I think I'm going to have this slightly go off the top like so. And then we have this little bit of space down here that we can embellish with these elements. I think that looks nice. So when I say a little bit, let me tell you what it's turning out to be. About a half inch. But really, I'm just eyeballing it. So yeah, I think it's going to be about a half inch off the top. And then once we have this put together, then we'll center it. That's why I'm doing it in this order. Just FYI. Okay, I'm lining it up with my grid again. I'm using uh, the grid to kind of make my half inch offset. Now I'm going to center this top to bottom. And we're only going to glue three of the four sides to make the lower half a pocket. Okay. Burnish that down real good. Hmm. I lost my little strip. <laughs> Nala. Sorry, guys. Try to cut as much of that out as I can. Well, I had a little tag cut out. I don't see what I did with it. Oh my goodness. Well, I'm going to take a quick break and line up the papers that are going to go on the inside. And um, once I do that, uh, I'll also figure out what I'm doing here. So give me a minute. Be back soon. Okay. Sorry about the break. <laughs> I found my, my uh, um, ephemera piece and it was it was on the floor somehow I had knocked it off so let's go ahead and add these two little elements I definitely want to stack them slightly I think that's where we're headed so I'll go ahead and put these down I probably should have pushed that in more. That's okay. I still like it. There we go. So that's the finished page three A side. Now on the inside, I, I kind of got going and I forgot I hadn't turned the record on. So I've already trimmed this down. This is coming from that piece here. And then we're going to add this checkered, which is the backside of um, the deer right here and I just think that looks pretty cute pretty cute so this is already intact I'm going to go ahead and put the small piece down and then we'll add the plaid and we may need to trim it and then I'm going to tuck something in here and I think I've already got something prepared but I'm not sure it'll fit we'll see in a moment okay this is really not directional so it's kind of the good and the bad right <laughs> Well, actually, it's all good. It's directional on the flip side, but 
the B side is what, what I would consider the B side doesn't seem to have any direction, which is nice when you have patterns like that, because when you're trimming to make your eight by eight, um, you wind up with some vertical and some horizontal. And if the pattern doesn't have direction, you can use it any way you want. If it has direction, you get, you're limited. Okay. I think that looks cozy. Yes, it does. Okay, now we've got this, this pocket here. So I we have these cut aparts and I've added um, just cardstock to the back. So I think that's just what I'm gonna do. I like that. It could be a card if you wanted to make it a bifold or you can add a photo here or just do some journaling on the back side. I always like to put the black cardstock or whatever uh, coordinating cardstock because it stiffens it. So if it's something you're going to take in and out of a pocket, um, having it be extra stiff is helpful. So that's it for page three. I hope you guys like it. Back soon.